And we got someone else join. Uh, that would be Chin Yun. Chin. Um, it's Curry Chin. Curry Chin, yes. All right, hello. Uh, today's Saturday. It's actually August. August 23rd. 23rd, yes. And um, we're doing our usual commercial from the beginning. Jim is available for private sessions. And you can ask a very personal question during, during private sessions, the one which you cannot ask during a public webinar. For example, you can ask to talk to your higher self, to your alien self, if you have other incarnations up there. You can ask about health issues, which you might not want to bring up publicly. You can talk in length about your hybridization, uh, ancient, you know, there are ways of asking about ancient hybridization, past lives, current hybridization, future hybridization, your hybrid children. You can talk to your hybrid children. You can talk to, invite whoever you like, but basically you can talk to, you know, specific people up there and consciousnesses and things of that sort. So uh, a lot of things you can do in private sessions which you, and even you can ask Jim to record, and he has a way to do that if he remembers how to do that. Yes, I, I just have to get Papa going. Yes. It is installed. Yes, it is. Um, and you, you find Jim's... Uh, Contact information on the side, there is on the left, there is a gym menu, and you just click there and get all his contacts. And best way to contact you is through email and Skype. Skype, yes. I guess, is good. Yeah, my, e <coughs> my email and Skype are both good, yes. And hello, everybody. Let's say hello. Okay, so we already said hello to everybody, but we have... Curry Chin. Curry Chin. We have Justin. Hey, Brian. Gabriel. Hello, Kim. Hello. Pegasus, yeah. Noah, Hi. and Sean, Hi. and Taylor. And Taylor. Hello. Hello, Hello everybody, and welcome. Hello, and welcome. <clears throat> um, who do we invite today? Does anybody want to invite anyone today? Let's give them a chance. Yes. I will grab my notes from the car, but... Does anybody... Angel, Angel, Daniel, please. An angel? Angel the heel. We oh, lost his presence. The okay. Last okay. time it was so it was the the invite the energy was really high. I felt it so strong. Oh wonderful, good. I wonder if he has any messages for today or if he'll just answer questions. We can bring him down. He is available. As soon as you mentioned his name he told me he was available, so that was good. Lakesh hasn't spoken to all of us in a very oh, long time. Oh, Lakesh right? hasn't been around. He's been in some private sessions, but he's not been in a public session for a little while. And a lot of people have asked about that. Okay. Lakesh, you hear that? Okay. Anybody else? One more? If there is one more. Who do they invite? Um, Angel Cahill and Lakesh. And, yeah, and to well, and to Kerr, to Kerr chooses. Okay, to Kerr. Yeah, four has become very popular. To Kerr comes into to a lot of things anymore. For Angel, he uh, asked to uh, not to bother him with uh, minor things. Well, he doesn't. He wants to be. He is authorized to speak about godly things. Godly things are of you know, godly type of uh, important things, something really, really, really important, something of global and galactic level and or life-threatening level, something very important. Life, birth, and uh, love are angelic uh, realm things. Okay. And we got, is it Barbara? Let me see, somebody new. Hello. Who is it? So it looks like Shpeba. Hello. Hi. Shpeba. How do you pronounce your name? Looks like Barbara to me. Is it Barbara? Oh, yes, it's Barbara. All right. Hi, Hi. Barbara. All right. 
It is Barbara. She, All right. I thought she was coming in person, but she's coming online. Okay. Fine. Nice Hi. To... Hi. All right. One more invitation was uh, our European friends. We have tons of European friends, you know, physical ones, uh, human European human friends. Uh, ask to invite someone from uh, a ship over Europe. Some oh, okay. aliens from a ship over Europe. They know the ship exists. You know, they make lots of crop circles up there, down okay. there, sideware. You know, other other side of the world. So they invite um, aliens from from that ship to to speak. All right. Um, I guess we can start if. If you like, okay. Do, do, do a special good. blessing. Let, let me give um, let me give some kind of uh, a word. I don't. I'm let me think what what's there. Um, uh, today is sleepy. <laughs> today is sleepy. Jim didn't sleep well. I didn't sleep well because of many reasons. I, I don't know. Something is different with energies. I'm kind of, I cannot sleep because I'm so energized and I'm trying to direct these energies to good. Basically. You can either be harmed by those energies which shake you, or you can use them to charge yourself. So I wish you to utilize. So we are. It's like a shower. The energies are not not overly healing, but they are energies. It's like electricity in the air. And sometimes you jump, and sometimes you get really tired. So I wish everybody. To be balanced, and to be balanced doesn't mean to stand still. To be balanced means to take energies and direct them to good. That is balance. When you walk, you keep the balance by walking. You have to move forward and keep the balance. That's the human balance. Anything that is alive, it cannot be balanced unless it moves forward. I wish you to move forward in balance. Welcome, thank you for coming through. You have been invited and thank you, we love your presence. Thank you. You were speaking of balance and I was listening. And I do have a message about balance. Thank you very much. The best way to start your day, to be balanced through the whole day, is to start every day the same. Start it with thanksgiving and start it with healing of yourself before you even touch the floor. Start it with the thoughts of the day that will be whole and balanced. And when you do find yourself in a situation where people would want to control you, do not let them. 
control yourself and tell them exactly how you feel because in this day and age that is a sign of strength and you do want to be strong in this day and age because weakness is now those who will be preyed on and you want to be strong in many ways in your morality in your thought processes in your activities in your the way that you resonate with the world you want to f be a strong presence so that they can learn about who you are because you will give them a message later because they will want to hear what you have to say because your joy will be strong do you have any questions my children yes Angel Gahil welcome back and yes. thanks for coming thank uh, you for having me thank you uh, actually I was working 10 years ago in a bank and then I heard on my left ear a voice that came in with a whisper and really startled me and said only one word uh, resign and really started me at that point I freaked out it so said resign resign yeah, yeah. Design or resign? Resign. Leave your job. Ah. One moment. That was not me. Who was it? But it was an angel presence. It was Michael. The reason he was telling you to do so is he saw that there was another place for you and your happiness had fleeted from this job it was not where you wanted to be there was very little resonation with anything there except for maybe one or two people but the job itself did not resonate with you yeah but I applied everywhere and everything was chose and I thought that was a sign of attention I am not sure why this was given but there was something for you I will have Michael speak to you. But he has told me that it's not, the job did not resonate with you and it was causing health issues and you had to leave before this happened. I have another question also. Yes. Last time when you came in, you said when you see angels, you see them as androgynous people. And yes. I saw, and I, so I did. Uh, I passed by a car, and then I looked at a person, and he just turned his face and looked to me eye to eye, and that's how he looked really and and indigenous and like uh, Saint, uh, you know, uh, uh, Papa Noel, you know. Yes. Uh, he just looked to me Michael, in the eye. And that was Michael once again in the body of a human. He was wanted to speak to you about something. Michael is around you a lot and he will speak to you more shall I ask for him all the time and he will do ask for Michael okay thank you very much well appreciated love you much love and answers will be coming to you is there any other question Yes, I had a thought this morning. I was looking at a video about um, wormholes, and um, I had a thought that if one learns to spin with the wormhole, um, they will be able to pass through the other side instead of getting destroyed by resisting the tidal wave of the wormhole itself. There and are being pulled to the other side. Wormholes and black holes are different. A wormhole. Oh, black hole. Black hole. Yes, I know that you were talking about a black hole, but you were saying wormhole. They right. are different. Black holes can do the same as wormholes, except the density within a black hole is millions of times greater. So the wormhole is more easily accessed for traveling 
Many uh, such black holes cannot be accessed because the pressure is too great. Mm -hmm. But a wormhole, similar to a black hole, but hollow through and through in some ways, can take you from one edge of space to another. Right. Would it seem that as if something. it's invisible? It will not seem invisible at first, but it can seem invisible when you enter it. Ah. The, the black hole, um, uh, the strong interdimensional force and weak interdimensional forces, it's a push and pull of energy, of creation. Yes. But what about the question about spinning? Spinning. There is spinning in both the both of these vortexes. But the spinning is only temporary because you come one side and out through the other if it's a wormhole. Yes, you will have spun, but you will have not have even known it sometimes. And in a black hole, it is too spinning way too fast for you to ever go in there. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you. Love you. Peace be with you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have a request. Uh, okay. Yes. Go ahead. All right. I just learned um, my friend's, uh, her name is Galia, Galina. Uh, he, she got a child uh, who is very sick, a uh, few months old. And apparently much of that sickness is because of psychological things in the family. It's not physical. It's more, more like spiritual. Yes. So I'm inviting any, anyone's help to that family. I will help. Thank you. What is the first name of the child? I don't know. But we spoke about that yesterday. I see. I understand what you're saying now. Yes. Who else has a question? I have a question. Do you heal? Yes. My question was a couple of weeks ago I was lying down to meditate and I heard a voice tell me, would you like to hear everything or would you like to say something? And I was wondering who it was and what they meant. One moment. Thank you. There was a message like this came through an alien named Sunshot. He wanted to know what you were experiencing at that moment before your meditation. And he wanted to know if your meditation was full of knowledge. You wanted it to be full of knowledge or if it was knowledge intended. Yeah, it was. It was knowledge intended and therefore you were aware of that intention, he actually just modified it. Do you understand? With his words, he modified your intention so that you would think about it and answer those questions for your intention. Is there someone else before I leave? I have a question, but I, I would go after anyone. Angel yeah. Vigil. Brian. This is Brian. Much love to you, my friend. Much love. That's all I wanted to say. That's to the much Thank love and appreciation to the angelic realms. Blessings upon you and all those who listen and obey and understand. Can, any, can everybody hear me? I will go me? now. Yes, I can hear you. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, do you have a minute? Yes, continue. Okay, thank you for coming to visit us. Uh, this is Kim. Um, I have had, yes, Kim. I have had an entity uh, who has been spending a lot of time with me and a couple of times has wanted to channel through me. Um, and it's been a very rough entry. Um, I've tremor from head to toe. Um, and I've tried twice and I'm trying to negotiate with this entity for it to be a smoother uh, a smoother entry. Um, I'm just wondering, can you give me any advice yeah. on this and uh, who, who it might be? Yes. The who is not important at this time. It is a friendly entity, but you must open your mouth with this entity because that's where they enter. They will come in through your mouth and they will move through your chakras up and down. That is how you will be able to be with this entity if you would wish to. It is a female entity. Actually, Kim, you have been getting signs and miracles very often this week. Oh, yes. And you have been getting very much psychic energy from many places. Do you feel that? Oh, yes, very much. <laughs> when you channel this entity, because it is a friendly entity that needs to come through you just to let you feel something, do you understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. Open your mouth, open your eyes, open your heart and soul. They will not harm you. But they want you to discover them in just the way they enter you and blend with you at this time. Their name will come later. Okay. Thank but there you is a reason much. for this. There is a reason for this. You are experiencing much psychic energy and many psychic messages. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. You're welcome. Much love. Much love. Would it be appropriate for me to speak now? Speak, Max. All right. So, uh, yes, I also, last week I got lots of tiny miracles, tiny synchronicities, and it was sort of a revelation for me. Basically, last, you know, the whole life I'm trying, was trying to satisfy whoever I thought is above me, like the God, the higher forces, and I was trying to guess their wishes and align myself with their wishes. And at some point, like lately, I just found that the more I try to align myself with what I suppose they want from me, the more I found myself to be stretched beyond what I am. So it was not me anymore. And I just realized that being myself might be more important than to satisfy yes. whoever wants, sends me the synchronicities and messages. Aligning with yourself as your creator of all things is the most important. You create your universe around you. And so trying to create yourself around someone else's universe does not work. It only brings grief and unhappiness because that is not your resonation. Your resonation is to be the highest of your being, the person that you are meant to be, doing the things that resonate with you, feeling the love that goes out from you. Because if you try to live in someone else's domain, love does not come from you. Do you understand? Yes, thank you. So therefore, resonate highly within yourself, within those things that are you, because everyone is a different person, and everyone resonates slightly different. That is the difference in the vibration of each human. Do you understand? Of course, yes. And therefore, without your unique 
and diverse resonation, it, the universe cannot be perfect. Do you understand that? Yes. Therefore, resonate as who you are. Do not try to change yourself, but accept yourself for who you are. Get rid of the negativity, of course, but accept all those things that society may say that it is not good for you. Your sexuality, your who you love and what you love. This is a resonance that is perfect within you. Do not fight it because it cannot be fought. And you know, uh, Kahir, I, f yeah. I feel like someone is working in my head right now. I'm yeah. battling some can you tell me who that is? The resonation from the orb has called someone to you. They are helping you with clarity of mind and more grounding. Your grounding is coming along very well, but there is one or two places where there are gaps in your grounding, and they are trying to help you fill that in. But you are way more grounded, if I can say it that way. Way more? Yes, way more grounded, yes. Than you were six months ago. You have become much more third dimensional and are feeling your resonations. I know you do not like your work, but stay there until uh, something resonates within you that you must leave. Okay. Hello, to Angel Cahill. Yes. Yes. Um, we have a couple of people who have questions on the Google chat. Spoon. And yes, okay. I have a question from Justin. He's sure. in the here. Yes. He says, "How can we strengthen our personal connection with the choir?" He's felt the choir's presence of Michael, Raphael, Gahil, Metatron, Jophiel, things of that nature, angels. The only way to get closer is to join the choir yourself. Become right. part of the choir. Do not be afraid to stand with them and join in. If this is meant to be, it will happen. Audrey has a question as well. Yes. Um, well, she hasn't written it down yet. Uh, She's telling me she has a bad connection, but she says she has a question. If you can connect to Audrey. Her connection is weather related. Oh, okay. Let, let me do, do my question and then maybe during that time she comes with her question. Right. So uh, you mentioned the work which you don't like. I mean, Gabriel's that doesn't resonate with Gabriel. Uh, yesterday I was working on a project which was interesting to me. It was my my child project which I like. And at some point I was just stuck. I knew what to do and I had energy but I couldn't come close to computer. I couldn't continue. And I know if I force myself I could continue but then I would har harm my health. Yes. What was that? How do you overcome this? in that particular situation for you Max there was someone that else that needed your attention and so you were taken away from that intentionally and you will return to it when it is right but that happens very, thank you but that happens very often is it every time I need to stop what I'm doing you are a father and you have many things that you must think about in the family context uh -huh. and therefore it takes you away so that you become more aware of what is happening around you and this is a miracle of love and family the things that you are doing will happen and they will come to fruition but there is that break in your thoughts and for health reasons as well that they stop you. Who are they? I cannot tell you right now. But they are aliens. Oh. So in general that would be aliens who are 
were usually interfere or would be spirit guides or angels? You have three different beings that interfere with your work for different reasons. Of angel, of alien type? They would all be of three different species. Of alien type? Yes. Uh -huh. But all are friendly with you. Uh -huh. But they protect you in the way that they do not want you to be overloaded because these times when you come to a standstill, there are two or three ways in which you can function with this particular problem. And they see that perhaps the way that you are going may not be exactly correct and the next time you sit down there is clarification. That makes a lot of sense. And so they prefer that instead of going back and correcting your mistakes that you clarify and get them right the first time as much as possible. So how much of what I'm doing is mine and how much of what I'm doing is... It is all you. Mm -hmm. They are just stopping you to help you rethink and clarify. Also, I was composing a song, and then I just thought that the song comes out okay, but I'm not inspired at all. It was first time when I composed a song, and I'm not in inspired. Inspiration does not necessarily mean a good song. But when an idea comes to fruition, it can be greater than inspiration. Was there anyone in person who stopped me, or was it me? It was you. Thank you. I'm done with my questions. I appreciate your answers. Thank you. Hello, and Angel Daniel. Yes. Yes, Justin had a second question. That's I. He says, I feel Uriel, Jophiel, Samuel, and others attempting to come through myself and, Hukulo, and our Hukulo family. We can be done to sh what can be done to strengthen these connection is the feeling of astral wings growing astral and wings for himself they are growing yes yeah for he has the same question for everyone else friend, for yeah. his female friend astral wings are not a problem what was the other part uh, he wanted to know if that's happening to other Hukulo members. It is. They mm -hmm. are not quite aware of it yet. But angels are much involved in this ascension. They must be. They must be. Because it is the truth of the future. So we must help and protect and guide and bring messages when we are able and when it is time. And how can he sharpen this connection between us? The connection between angels and humans is never far away. If you desire the connection, it is there. You may not always feel it, but you feel the flutter of angel wings within you somewhere. I believe he understood that answer. Thank you very much. Ellie also had a question. Yeah. Um, she wanted me to ask about Angel and PL, protector of the birds and endangered species. What yeah. happens when a species disappear from Earth? They appear in another dimension. They are never ever gone from reality in some place. So if they leave this reality, this timeline, they are still present on another. Perhaps it's the timeline where they flourish the best. But let me tell you, also the timeline has to do with the chemicals and the pollution in the air, the thoughts that are being brought forth from humanity because some animals and some insects, etc., even trees and flowers, cannot be present in certain atmospheres of negativity, in certain atmospheres where purposely things are being destroyed, and therefore they choose to not be in this dimension any longer. 
Thank they you. make themselves targets to those who would have them obliterated. Angel Sahil, before you go, I have one more question. Yes. Uh, uh, actually, my, my uh, inquiry is about uh, the orbs. Do angels come in an orb form, or any other entities like ETs can come into an, an orb form? Many alien species can use orb forms for many different reasons. Angels do not come in orb forms. They come in their likeness as they are, or they come in a human smaller form, but they do not come in order. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, once I uh, made an uh, Reiki attunement to a person, and then after that, I slept and I woke up and I found an orb, which is uh, uh, fluorescent in the, co in the color, reddish, yeah. and it had uh, tassels beneath it. And I was surprised, you know, but it, it didn't start, it start on me or anything. So who was it? That was a friend letting you know that they are nearby. And you can use that orb if you find it again. Do you have it with you? I do. It went to the ceiling. When I, as I looked at it, it went to the ceiling. And then it never came back. I see. When it returns, make sure it does not leave again. Uh, recently, during the month of Ramadan, I saw different orbs, smaller ones, but uh, the numbers were about nine. I looked yes. at them, and I was sleepy at, at, at that point, so I just didn't do anything about it. Nine, it was, is, nine is a completion number. This means that you have completed one phase, and something more will happen now you are going to start a new beginning phase. And these orbs may be part of that. Uh, what are they, and they are those entities? They are reptilian and another species, but they are teachers. Teachers, great. Also, I see shades of light, like shades, you know? It, start, it comes in and goes, shades, just like that, sparkles around my room. I see. Do not be disturbed. I'm not, Don't no. their energy that they leave behind, for it is for you. Okay. I am going to leave now. Thank you very much. We will appreciate it. Thank you, Thank very you much. Angel. Thank you, Angel. Love you. Love you. Thank you. Thanks for Annie, you've been sent to me. Namaste. 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 <laughs> Hello. Sounds like a Hello. Hello, Lakesh. Lakesh. Hello. Lakesh. Yes, I'm here. Much, much love. It's Brian. Welcome back. Thank you. Lakesh, welcome. We've met. Thank you. Angel Kakil is a hard act to follow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have been very busy with many family things, and my granddaughter's celebration was the last three days. So we had to do much preparation for the three-day celebration. Yeah. Aww. I, I was inviting you, so thank you for coming. Oh, thank you. Yes, I I love... Oh, do you have your snakes there? Yes, I see, yes. Okay. Well, they are not here, right? Yes. I can get them. Ah. Uh, okay. Ah. Your favorite. I've come to visit. I haven't seen you, some of you, for a while. So I have come to say hello. I have come to uh, answer questions if you would like to. Can I go first? Max wants to go first. Yes. All right. So I have a question from Slava. You know Slava? Slava in Russia. Yes. Yes. He is a great helper. He does tons he does of work. Much, much things. Tons of work. Tons of help. Yes. So question number one. Uh, he asks, have I worked in the colonies number three and number one? You have worked in 
in three, but not in one. You have been to one, but you didn't work. Thank you. Uh, he asks, how is my success in the colonies? Have I helped in, you, in any way? Oh, yes, you've helped a great deal. You are very driven. And actually, your telepathic uh, workshops have been coming along quite well. You are feeling also some psychic energy around you these days. You are feeling a resonation that is getting stronger toward a, toward a, a higher goal that you feel that is coming into existence right now. You mean telepathic workshops he was studying telepathy? He was studying telepathy, yes. And he has much psychic energy around him right now. He was studying telepathy in Colony 1? Yes, and he worked in Colony. Uh, as a video editing person? In, in any form that they could use him in, because he had much talent and energy, and he has great vision. Yes, yes. <clears throat> and he's a nice poet, an artist, yes. And therefore easy to work with as well. Yes. So yes, he was very, very popular in, in uh, the third colony. He's been there more than once, probably four times. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Question number two. Oh. I have heard, he says, I have heard that early in the colony number three, there was about six humans, and each did the video in his, in his own way, yes. as he wanted, and there was no common agreement about how to make films. How, how, about, how is the situation now, and is the relationship between, compar uh, relationship between people in the colony number four. Let me tell you about that. Uh, there's a little story that goes along with that. Um, they let everyone do their own thing in colony three so that they would get an idea of what kind of creativity they had, what kind of ideas they had for first contact, what kind of thought processes went into their creations, what kind of machinery they knew how to work, what kind of thoughts that went into the uh, creation process, meaning that how was, their, how was their base work? Do you understand what I'm saying? But um, that was a very clever start because then they knew how to access every human to their fullest potential when helping to do the videos. They also did this with an alien group as well because they had to find out who could work together, what ideas mesh together, where they were going to find the greatest amount of success, and what thought patterns resonated more with, with more than one person other than just themselves. This is a very important concept because if it just resonates with yourself, it's not going to be a great communication tool. If it resonates with many people, then it will be a great communication tool and they will be able to use it much more efficiently. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Yes. So therefore, Slava, you have been to the Colony 3 several times because your ideas mesh with more than one person and more than one entity. Does that make sense? Yes. And also... You are well liked among the those that are in the video colony, and they like you very much. You are sort of quiet with them, but yet you will speak up when necessary. And Slava says, said, I would be happy to be part of your team. This is a great chance for me. Thank you so much for this unique opportunity. And Crook Fekneer would say to you, no, thank you, because your input has been very good. And, and you have helped them in many ways that you don't even realize because you have um, fully integrated into the team. Does that make sense to you? Yes, wonderful. Yes. Who's yes. next? Yes, I have questions for many people. <laughs> ah, many people. There are many people. Yes, yes. Come okay. Along. We welcome every one of you. Come along, many people. Who is many people first? Okay, it's Denida, Tyler, Justin, <laughs> and 
Pegasus. Very good. Go in order. One, two, three, four. Okay. Zenaida has um, an entity coming into her just now. Ah, yes. She 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 said it's coming in very strongly. Yes. And it's speaking to her now. She just wanted to see if you had anything to say about that. That's a wonderful thing. The entity that's coming into her now has some things for her to say. She will I will come back to her because it will give her something to ask or actually something to say perhaps. Right. So go to the next person. All right. Uh, Rowie has a question about Sagittarian angels. Yeah. He wants to know the astrologic connections. Um, that is a hard one for me because I do not know angel uh, patterns in that way. Their, their cosmos is great and they are affected by many things because they are not just part of the universe. They are part of all the universes. So therefore, their, their astrological placement may not be in this universe only. And so it would be affected by other things in other universes. Are you following me so far? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so you cannot just come and... I could not read an, a Sagittarius angel's um, horoscope, so to speak. Is that the right word? Yes, yes. But I can tell you that they do resonate to at least 30% of what humans do. Wow. Makes sense. Yes. Thank you. Resonance of vibration. Yes, resonance of vibration, yes. Yes. In, that, okay. in your astrological presence. And they can do that with presences all over the galaxy and universe because they, they are part of everyone's astrology in some way. Does that make sense to you? What does yes. a Sagittarian vibration represent in your civilization? Actually nothing. Ah. <laughs> because we do not have that. We do not have a Sagittarius in our, our, we're from a different angle and so Sagittarius was a name given by humans to a certain sky figuration, configuration and so we have a totally different configuration from where we are looking into space and into the galaxy and the universe so Sagittarius does not exist for us and we have tw we have uh, 12 signs and and they are more divided than yours. Uh, for us, Sagittarius is kingly, princely. It's a warrior type, a type which has lots of humor and energy and very lucky with money. What Do you have a vibration of that sort? Oh, that would be me. <laughs> I'm all those things, but it's not called Sagittarius. All right. I'm kingly, I have a good sense of humor, I do all these things, um, but it is not called Sagittarius, it's called Thelayessa. I could give you the 12, Thelayessa is my sign, it, it is only an area of 22 days, your time, that is Thelayessa. Does that make sense to you? Would you have uh, an analogy for Aquarian, Aquarius sign? An Aquarius sign would be similar to, you see, an Aquarian on your planet is a water bearer, but it's an air sign, so it controls some of the water signs. Do you understand that? Yes. Um, ours would be Blista, but um, Blista is actually more powerful than an Aquarian is on your planet because the smaller the day period that that takes in, the greater the energy flow within a small day period. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So you take your day period and those energies, we have learned to increase our energy in the day periods since they're only 22 Earth days long. Um, 
there's many of them. And there's sub signs as well. So there's five sub signs. So those are on the the cusp of five of the signs, but they have a very distinct uh, resonation in the universe, and they last two days each. Um, and within those two days, there's much power. And, and those people that have those signs, those sub-signs, are actually very influential. So Sagittarius in our planet is the vibration of winter solstice. It's a vibration of de death and rebirth. Mm -hmm. And Aquarius is a couple months later. It's basically a, an early childhood. It's like for a very tiny baby, which sucks milk or maybe starts walking. And maybe that's why I'm so aligned with the babies. Would it be the same correspondence in your planet with, with winter solstice for Sagittarius and a and, uh, couple months later for Aquarius? That's a that that's a question that I would have to figure out. Ah. Um, but I don't know that off the top of my head. But is your birth birth close to winter solstices? Yes, we have solstices. Yes, uh, we have four of them. You have two. Uh huh. Um, but there is actually four. And we have those as well, and they are very powerful and celebratory times. Mm -hmm. So, I do know, and my birth is close to one, yes. Did, were you born in the fall? The fall? What is, oh, autumn. your autumn. Yes, we do not have the same seasons. As oh, you don't. Guys. No, we don't have the, the seasons that you have. We have um, much different kind of weather. There's, we don't have a season called autumn because the leaves on the trees don't change. They do fall off, but they don't change color. And, and the plants, there's a different set of plant vegetation for every time of the year in all different parts of our worlds. And some plant vegetation only exists on world two, some three, some one. You understand. So uh, as three planets and I'm talking about mine primarily, um, we have all kinds of different um, seasons, as you will, but uh, nothing like autumn here, really, except for when the, I guess when the leaves fall off our trees, but that happens sometimes more than once a year, so. But were you born uh, in the beginning of the cold season? If you're a Sagittarian. Season. Cold season. Um... Jim is saying Theraflu. What? No. No, that's not... Winter is a... I see what he... Yes, he's saying... No, I am not born at the beginning of the cold season. Our seasons are windy, hot, um, complacent, or, or there's a time of no air. There's a time of much much water or much fluid. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a time of much heat, mm -hmm. a time of uh, much wind, so and things of that nature, and and uh, they do not call them by the same names as you. Of do, course, so. thank you. So there's more, more like five or six seasons on our worlds, and all three worlds at least have five seasons. Some of them have six. Thank you. Uh, sorry for my inquiry. I thought that whatever comes out of it, all, all the facets, they are so alien to us. It's so yes. interesting to look at them. Yes, so our, our seasons are much different. Thank you. I welcome, I welcome questions. Sarah, you were speaking. Yes. No hot. No hot. Okay. Um, I have actually three questions, two, per two uh, general and one personal. My yes. personal one is um, how am I doing with the colony two E two, and uh, am I proceeding? I have uh, a, a feeling that I have a heart telepathy through my heart. Yes, you do. Yes. The heart telepathy is yes there. You are doing well on two. Do you ever feel like when you get up in the morning that your legs or arms hurt? No, I feel I need to be more fitter than I am. Yes. <laughs> so take but me more often. 
you are now getting used to your exercising on Colony 2 then, and they're teaching you some diet, but you're not doing too badly with that in the certain situation that you're in, but uh, you do like to cook, so. The other two questions, they're general. I want to ask about Krishna, the Indian deity. He's blue in color. Was he Pleiadian too? Oh, that is a good question. Thank you. Yes, he did have Pleiadian, very definite Pleiadian influences. But when you look at him, they also put on him all of his um, abilities. They put the third eye on him. They put the different things on him, the, the different parts of him that weren't visible to the human eye, but yet they could see it in him and know that it existed. So when you see a picture of Krishna, Krishna, you see him as the spirit that they know him to be and not the human form. Was he of uh, tall blues, blue Pleiadians, or short blue Pleiadians? Your species or Aaron's species? He was a more he was more like my species, but a different species than either one of us. Uh huh. Why why was he the only the, the only um, person on earth was blue in color. He was the only one. He was the only one, yes. That remained blue in color through his whole existence. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Um, the other question, sorry, yes, Sarah. The other okay. question is that, and the other general question is, uh, in about Egypt, it's the only place that has heliographic hel writings and it has all the ETs that we know of you right now, all in one place. Yes. So tell us why is it in one place in, in Egypt only? That is a good question, but the answer is simple. Um, the ETs were all over the planet. The, the hieroglyphics had already had a primitive start there, but they were very primitive. The, the aliens who settled there saw great potential in the people there, and so they built a language around the people that they met there. Now, the Mayans and Gnostics and all the others <coughs> that had civilizations, they worked with them as they were in their own civilizations with their own languages at their beginnings. And so, if you will notice some things about the Mayan culture, look a little Egyptian as well. There's some of those thought patterns were transferred. Some of the Gnostic transfers were done as well. There is a similarity in some things in their cultures that the aliens brought back and forth to each settlement or civilization. And therefore, but I wanted to add this before I go any further. The Egyptian civilization what is attached heavily to the Atlantean civilization. So in the Atlantean civilization you would find also hieroglyphics and many things Egyptian. Does that make sense to you? So, and also they, there was several civilizations that had the same aliens moving around the planet to help them in their own way and understanding that their culture was important in the way that it was because they couldn't change it in the blink of an eye as it was. So they worked with it, each culture as they found it and worked with their ideas as they found it. And they also were, were able to bring up the vibration by working through the cultures and not opposing them. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Yes, sir. That, Thank you very much, Lakesh. Did yes. that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Can you, can you clarify more about Gnostics? We don't. We thought about Gnostics as a religious movement or knowledge movement, not like civilization. Where would it be? On the island of Crete. Ah. They were a very, very advanced civilization, but they were, they were right there on the island of Crete, and they left much 
genuine information about their society, but they vanished off the face of the earth because they were actually taken away by um, a culture that they wanted to be part of. Did Jesus of Nazareth, the one they call the Nazarene, did he study with them, Lakesh? At one time, I believe he may have, yes. Why hmm. would you ask that question? Just a feeling, a thought. Yes, because he knew about their civilization. He definitely knew who they were and where they were going. And they had removed themselves from the earth uh, much before his birth. However, he knew them in a different lifespan. Ah, Thank that you. makes sense. Okay. I believe Sarah had a lot, yes. Yes. Um, Justin says, Lakesh, your granddaughter approached him as Koraish. Koraish? Koraish, yes. Yes. I and call her Dia for a pet name, but her name is Koraish. Oh, okay. Um, he felt her pre he, he felt the presence of Kalish and introduced your granddaughter breathtaking beauty and a physical trip is being felt, he says. Yes. This is all very possible because you are in an a you are in a period of flux, Justin. There is much happening for you, many things coming to you and leaving you at the same time. You cannot all not fit in one space. Does that make sense to you? So things that are negative are leaving, and things that are positive are coming, but there is also many spirits and, and species and thought patterns that are around you at this time, it will slow down a bit in the future so that you can assimilate it all into your thought patterns and, and into your being and into your female friends being and thought patterns as well. But right now you're being bombarded by information and experiences. Does he resonate with that? He didn't write anything just yet, but I'm sure he does because he's been telling us about it. If he answers, let me know. Okay, I will. But um, many things are leaving him as well as coming in because there's not enough space for everything to be there at once. Yes. You must understand that. Some things have to leave. Mm -hmm. um, uh, who else is there with you? Tyler. He Tyler. says... Tyler. How are you, Tyler? Yes, he, had a, he believes he had a UFO visiting. He had a video of it. And he yes. wants to know who were the UFOs that showed themselves to him, and do they have a message for him? And were he wanted to say orbs? thank you to them, and he loves them. Was those the orbs that he saw? Yes. Orbs? Yes. In the sky. Those are reptilians. Uh, orbs are usually reptilians, and uh, but they were friendly ones. And uh, But there is more than one species of reptilians that use orbs because it is... It, it is something that they share some of their technology with each other, even though they might not get along all well. They use it a uh, transfer of technology sometimes for information and strategic locations. So, um, but um, yes, they were friendly. They knew he was there. Um, he has an interest in. Reptilian, so they did make themselves aware. He's curious about them. Right. Did he respond to that? Uh, I think that he says, oh, Alex, I mean, Justin says yes to the question that you posed. Yes. That he understood. Very and um, nothing just yet from Tyler. That's fine. Okay. Uh, Pegasus had a couple of questions. Uh, Pegasus. Yes. How are you, Pegasus? Yes. <laughs> He says um, he wants to know how does he fully integrate a being into him when he is channeling. Okay. Let me tell you something about Pegasus. Or let me tell you something, Pegasus. You are much more alien thinking than many people. And so you may work the system of channeling a little bit differently than a human. So if you would like to channel better as a human hybrid, you have much alien thought process. 
what I'd like you to do is breathe deeply. Make sure your breaths are deep when you are trying to channel. And make sure that you uh, charge your, cha your chakras before you do a channeling because this will help you to bring in um, anything. This will help you to bring in anything because your chakras have to be at a high charge because you have so many elements of alien in you that they all need to be present in some way. Does that make sense to you? Ask him if that makes sense. Okay. His, especially his Lyran has to be very present. Mm. I believe he's listening to you. Uh, Tyler says, awesome, man. <laughs> and um, still haven't received anything from Pegasus. But his second question, yes. he said he also got an idea that there are Lyrans who volunteer to be hybridized so they can mate with humans of Earth. Did this idea come from an ET? Oh, Pegasus. I think you know the answer to this. <laughs> part, of that is, part of that came from him as well, because he is willing to mate with Lyrans. He finds that an exciting prospect, and therefore he is one of the few humans that has even thought of mating with Lyran. And yes, it did come from ETs as well, but it was a culmination of thoughts. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rawi, he had another question. He said... He would like to ask about the entity called Phoenix of Oversoul Fire, though he he had an interaction with it last night. I see. Hmm. One moment. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not aware of that name, but it's... Hold on. I'm aware of what he's speaking of. And what was his experience? May I ask? Oh, I don't. He, uh, uh, a moment. He has to type it, you know? Yes. Yeah. Um, and, give and, him a moment. Okay, I'll give him a moment. And Zenaida, one, she's asking, uh, did you say who the entity was that was coming into her? No, I did not say who the entity was. It, it, the female entity that I spoke of? Yes, the female entity. Shira I think she Shah. wanted to know maybe a name. Her name is Shirasha. 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 Okay, very well. Thank you so much for that. And um, Justin had, um, he wanted to confirm something. He says, Koresh, recent, recent trip to Crystal Room in Colony 123. He wants that confirmed. And yes. Lakash Kalish already did. Koresh and Ophelia, is she a Pleiadian fairy uh, confirming these blue Pleiadian meetings? That's what he wants to do. She's a fairy, but she is not a blue Pleiadian fairy. She is an earth fairy. The blue Pleiadian fairies will not speak to earthlings. Uh, fairies, trolls, wood nymphs, they're all earth creatures that are only in the earth right now. Well, that's not quite true, but they're mostly on the earth right now, but the elves are something different. They, they're they all over the place. But many of those, the fairies, are earthbound creatures. A blue fairy would be a, a prominently in a blue a planet area. So. Okay. And Jasmina from, uh, I believe she's in Europe. I forget which country. Uh, she says she has not got many support in her life. Can you tell her something to overcome this? Come, stay where you are with all these beautiful people here. They will be support for you. However, in your personal life, you support yourself. You create your own universe. I've, you create your own nows. So find some place where there are people and create a now with them, if that is possible, if you are not, oh, you might be, are you not close to many people? I know your parents do not support well.
but you create that. This colony for you may find you moving somewhere closer to where people of your own mindset will be. And do not give up hope. Do not doubt that you will become part of a support group yourself, supporting others. Because when you support others, they support you back. And when you they support you, you support them. It, it just it works so beautifully. Do you understand? Okay. I will support you. <laughs> yeah. is it, is it, it, are, you fi are you finished, Sarah? Oh, uh, one more question for Z. She wanted to know, is the entity you just named a Lemurian? Lemurian. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Why? That was her question. Yes, <laughs> it is Lemurian. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh... Rainbow Phoenix approached Rowie. Yes. What was the experience? That's what I was asking. I wanted to see how, what he experienced from. Okay, Phoenix. let me see if he has anything just yet. It is true that he approached you. Yes, that is true. If that was what you were asking, yes, he did do that. And you did have an experience with him. However, I wanted to know what the experience was because it's different with him. If yours was different than what uh, some others have experienced. Mm. Okay, I think that's uh, Nitra says yes. Yes. To to the question. Yes, he was part of the the first humans to ever say that he would be willing to mate with Lyrans. And two people have the same question. Yes. Colby and Nitrous, um, they want to know when can we visit the colonies physically. It is coming up. All of your implants have been modified. Some of them did not turn out well. I have two that they said they told me that needed replaced or um, at least adjusted because they caused pain. Well, simply. Gabriel George just needed an adjustment. There was another one that caused pain that they might have to remove. Uh, Ellie, <laughs> this is the last one, guys. Promise you. Ellie <laughs> um, wanted to ask, uh, was a UFO sighting last night in Sofia, Bulgaria? She wanted to ask that herself, but she wanted me to do that for her. She saw a UFO, basically, last yes. night. She wanted to There's confirm that. Actually, the sightings of UFOs and orbs and things of that nature has increased sevenfold over the last six months. They're making themselves much more aware in the sky. Um, Jim sees them constantly now. Mm. And his friend that he sees them with always says, no, that isn't a... That isn't one, but that always turns out to be one because of some kind of action that it does. So it makes itself aware. Very good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And who was next? I was. Caitlin. Caitlin. Oh, gosh, everyone. Oh. <laughs> oh, I love talking to you, Lakesh. Ah, Caitlin, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm so good. I love hearing your voice telepathically. It's so oh. lovely. I always hear you say hello. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But, um, yeah, I missed you. I haven't talked to you for so long. I talked to you telepathically, but sometimes you cut out, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, sometimes it happens. But I've been very busy with celebrations. But now I am back. I was not in trouble, by the way. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. I was not in trouble. Make sure you tell everyone. <laughs> yeah, um, I have actually three questions for you. The first question would be, what exactly do I do in the colonies? Yes, you are. You go to actually three colonies, but not the third one, one, two, and four. There's a newly developed fourth colony for channelers. 
Ah. The first colony is the telepathic channels and the galactic languages. Then the second one is health, edu health, uh, dietary, and exercise. And the third mm -hmm. is making of the videos. And the fourth is uh, channeling and becoming comfortable with um, all the different entities. Because mm -hmm. they come, uh, they needed a channeling colony because there are so many different entities that will be coming through in the next year so they need mm -hmm. people to be prepared and understanding of how they will feel and what they will be like and and sometimes how abrupt or perhaps even crude they can sound to humans yes, yes. yeah yeah definitely I know what you mean because they take their words move it to your words and sometimes those words are not very nice but <laughs> It is yeah. okay because they are doing it in a vibration of just being honest. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, also, I heard, I don't know if this is correct or not, but is there seven telepathic leaders in Colony 1, or is there at least seven leaders in the colonies? There are at least seven, yes. In the telepathic colony, or in the telepathic car colony, are you talking about leaders or teachers? I'm not sure because I heard that I was one of the teachers. That are considered leaders as well, and so there is at least seven teachers because there's more than seven languages. There are some leaders there. Tukur, Nina, Nina is the main leader there, mm -hmm. and there are a couple others that I have. A supervisory kind of position. Oh, I see. Yeah, because I was told I helped somehow in that colony, and you did, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. I, I just remember the whole interview, and I was like, okay, this is all coming together because I'm getting this message. But um, thank you for that. They will not let me into the colonies yet, but I get to watch the videos. <laughs> oh yeah, that that's good. Mm -hmm. So but I know some things that are happening and who is supervisor and who is not and and who's in charge and who teaches and mm -hmm. that that stuff. <laughs> yes. Yeah. My second question was um, this is probably a little odd, but whenever I listen to this specific song that's Korean, <laughs> I always see this guy and um, this man that um, he has like black hair and like goldish. Um, eyes, and I just like it's. Uh, could you explain to me about what he means to me and like who he is? Because I always see him. He is an ascended master that comes and trains you and is with you at times. You are being trained in your sleep or sometimes even in your wake by this ascended master. Ah, I see. Yeah, because whenever I see this guy, um, it feels like a reunion kind of, because I'm like, oh my gosh, I know you, and <laughs> it's, yes. it's, I like you know, it. Yes, your teacher. He is your teacher. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very he much. He's not from planet Earth, but he is from a, a, an Earth where many humans are. But ah, yeah. He is your teacher, an ascended master from a different planet, but yet a very Earth like planet. Okay, yeah, thank you for that. Yes. And um, my last question was um, <laughs> something I'm really frustrated about. You guys are always telling me that I have so many experiences with alien life, and, and I'm like, Oh my god, I just, I don't understand because I don't know what I'm experiencing, like so many proofs and I'm trying to figure out what exactly that is because, you know, maybe to the human eye, maybe to somebody else that doesn't experience this stuff, I, they're probably like, oh my gosh, what you experience is something totally different on my level and then I'm yeah. probably so used to it, I don't know what I'm actually seeing that you guys this are telling me. Really true. Yes. Ah. Uh, yes. <laughs> You have experiences and you cannot, some of them you do not relate to others because you do not think they're unusual in any way. And so therefore they are a normal sort of thing to you. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them have left you at this time, some of those normal sort of things. But um, you will understand more in the future. You are still very young. 
but uh, they are they are um, preparing you. Preparing. Um, as Sabrina goes to councils, I believe one day you may go to councils as well. It will not change your Earth future, so I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So yeah. the councils, like, um, like a specific council, like, uh, I'm not sure what it would be specifically on, but you know, that'd be. Well, I, I'm really just, I'm just making an assumption by what I know from you and how they have trained you and what they are training you. I am assuming that they are training you to become someone in a council. Ah, I see. Okay, so thank you. That might not be true, but I believe that from what I can see, that could be very true. Ah, okay. Thank you so much, Lakesh. And it's good to have you back. We all oh, love you so much. You. I'm, I am happy to be here. I am happy to be moving around in Jim's body like usual. <laughs> Lakesh, yes. yes. Lakesh, is it my turn? It's your turn. You, you yes. are also after me. Oh, okay, go. Okay, okay, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> Lakesh, did you visit me in my dreams? I haven't seen you. No, I have not been around because I've been very, very busy. So can, can no, I can I invite? I will be coming soon. Can I send the same invitation to Kalish? Oh, Kalish has been around you. Yes. Okay. Kalish and I, I have felt him one time, I think. He'll be around a lot more than that. Yes. There are things that he must get under control before he can enter. So, yes, he's fine. Okay, so so it doesn't will not take so long, much longer time for that, or I do not think so. No, because I really miss his energy and connection. Yes. and he misses you as well. But he has to get everything in balance before he can come into you because he does not want to mess anything up in you. So that is good. Yes. Uh, All right, was, yes. Lakesh. Yes. Uh, hello, it's lovely to see you again. This is Kim. Hi, Kim. Hi. Um, hello. I have a question. Yes. <clears throat> Obviously, I'm all the way down the bottom of the planet in Australia. I'm in the southern hemisphere. Yes. Ma much of what I see in here relates to the northern hemisphere. Yes. Uh, I don't know whether I should apply these things, you know, regarding weather and economy and all these kinds of things to to my lifestyle and my situation here in this country. If it resonates with you there, then it is a universal resonation. There are some things that are very much the same between the United States, England, and Australia. Those three, and actually other places as well. But if it resonates with you to include that into your information bank, then that is something you should do. If it is something that does not seem relevant or does not resonate with you, do not do not enter it into your information bank. Kim, can you give an example? Because it sounds pretty cryptic. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. uh, oh, now I'm on the spot. It won't come to me. Um, so, something about the economy in 2016 was mentioned, and it was the, the states. Yes. The United States. Yes. Do not. Do not. Uh, well, let me put it this way: everything that happens in the states affects the world as it is. However, you will not be able to directly influence that. So why put that into your information bank? It's not going to be even relevant for you at this time or in the near future. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, take all of these predictions with a grain of salt. They yes. always change their plan. <laughs> yes, yes, it seems to be that way, yes. Yes, okay. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> Lakesh, I had one last thing. Oh, yes. Gabriel? Who is working with me now? I feel a lot of enemies. Yes. Well, that's Kalish around you. He's not been able to come in, but he is working with you in other ways. Okay. But Kalish is around you much of the time. I will come back around very soon. And uh, there is a young Octorian lady who is uh, learning from Kalish something so she is around you as well 
he, she is like a uh, a little bit of a trainee. How she got in that position with Kalish, they just were friendly, and he said he would help her. So she. He, yeah. It's uh, Sabrina told me that I have when she channeled that I have three Actorians around me. Oh yes, They're, but they've always been there. So I thought you knew of them. Not so okay. much. Ah. Taylor. Yes. How are you? Good. Good. I had a dream last night where I saw what I believe to be a reptilian being. A reptilian being. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me who it was. Um, one moment, please. You are very interested in reptilians. Mm -hmm. I understand that, and you have much Pleiadian in you. Were you told that before? Yes, I was. Um, but you are fascinated with the reptilians, and yes, that was a, one of that was of Grindel's species, the 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 um, the ones that are risers. Yes, yes, was, that's what the risers. Was the name, hmm? was the name Kumrock, C U M R O C. One one moment. Kunak Karian Shonzine. Sounds true. Oh, okay, that's cool. Kuriak is. Really good name. Yes, Kurak. Kuriak. Is it Kuriak? Yes, Kuriak is his. Yeah. What he goes by, yes. Okay. Um, was there anything you were trying to say to me? Or he was. He knows that you are interested in reptilians. I think he wanted to find out if you wanted reptilian infusion. He's one of the scientists that are in charge of those kind of things. Oh, all right. Um, Be careful when you choose reptilian yeah. infusions. Many yeah. people have problems with that. And I have a couple people that have severe problems with that. So be careful. If you, if you start an infusion you can stop it at any time. So if it's starting to make you a little bit crazy, then I would stop it. Because humans do not react to it. Um, some humans do very well with it, I, can, I have to say, but others do not. And it depends on what other things are there and how it is stimulating into the body and mind. Okay. Um, one last question. Yes. Were these the same species um, that were in my dreams about two weeks ago? I saw a ship in my dream, and it was two cylinders connected by a square in the middle. I was wondering if... Uh, that is a different species, but okay. that is unusual that you would see them. They have do you have a ship in the solar system. You must have attached to it on your astral travel. That is an aquatic species. Okay. <laughs> what was their name? They go by many different names. Um, the one they're currently going by is Besans. Um, okay. B, it's right. like B-E-S-E-N-Z. Besans. Sons. Can, I think that's how you would spell it here. Are they benevolent? Um, they're neutral. Oh, okay. Thanks, Lakesh. Max wants to say something. Uh, yeah, I have a couple questions. So one was um, about videos. Do you have any comments? We were so excited that the videos were released on YouTube, and then we were so disappointed that we want to, to see those videos. Um, how do I say this? Let me see. Um, they screwed that all up. Yes. Right. <laughs> that is the best way. Jim used. I used Jim's words. So, um, bad, bad timing and bad situation. Not thought through well in some ways. They do have an idea of sending them directly to the people at. Uh, the site. However, there is a danger in doing that with um, 
the uh, government seeing exactly who got the downloads. And that would make you a person of interest. So you would have to agree and give permission for that. Mm. And then they are going to consider that. Uh, I'm sure that Takur will bring that up shortly. I, I let the cat out of the bag early, I think. But they are government aware. Let's put it that way. And they fear for you if they would give you those downloads because they would be able to trace where they came from. All right. Uh, I understand. Let, uh, I mean, if you go that path, how about we release some videos from the colony which help government, something which would be perceived by the government as great help and which would be the great help to the government. Hmm. hmm. I will tell them about that idea. But I do not think that any of them are meant to be helping the government because the government has not helped them in any way. So I do. I think they have disconnected themselves governmentally. But I could be wrong. I am not part of Grukvignir, so I do not know for sure. Yeah, it, it could be creative. Like in Soviet Union, some great actors and artists were welcome because they joined, say, French Communist Party. They weren't communists, but they welcomed and spread the, the, the news. So the same tactics can be used for, you know, this global conspiracy. Something that will be perceived by them as friendly can be first released, so we open the channel, and then we can expand on that. I will give them that message. In fact, Takur is listening in, so she has already gotten it. All right. Next question was, I'm sorry, uh, actually, all right, go ahead, I can skip my turn. It's a generic question. I, I didn't know, did Sean want to go? Was he last? Sean, did you ask your question? Yes, uh, hello, Lakesh, I am send you much love. Oh, thank you very much, I send you much love as well. Uh, I have a question, I sent you a telepathic message a yes. few, a, a week ago. Did you yes. get it? Yes. Uh, I have another question. Yes. Uh, do I ever talk to you in my dream state? Always. Um, you are one of the more talkative people to me, actually. Um, you seem to have a fondness for me somehow. <laughs> yes, I love you, Lakesh. I love you so much. Really? I gathered that because you really... I say very nice things to me and do very nice things for me in your dream state. And and even though I cannot receive some of the things that you do, it is very loving and good. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Brian? Hello, Lakesh. This is Brian. Yes. Yes, yes. I, I just had two quick questions. Uh, the first is those that are around me. Uh, what you call the angelics? Do you yeah. know? Yes. Do you know? Are they many? Are they more? Uh, what we call just our uh, space brothers and sisters, the ETs. No, they're actually angelic beings. You have seraphim around you. Yes, I felt seraphim them. Seraphim are from the angelic realms. They're angel helpers, basically, like cherubs. Except yes. cherubs are not really how they are depicted. Cherubs are not as friendly and nice as seraphim. I I I felt many times in the dream state the golden the golden light the sparkle yeah. the golden ray is just beautiful presence. Yes, the seraphim can bring you that. They can bring yes. it to you, and so can angels do that as well. And any spiritual being. That was created because seraphim were also created. They were not like angels. They are not born, but they are created like yes. angels. So any creature of that nature can bring you these things. What are the one and that is coming be, close? Yes. yes, the ones that are the one that is coming the closest to me that wants to really work with me. Yes, is there a name or anything? Seraphim have names, but they must tell you themselves. Okay. There are angels. Angels announce their presence. Seraphim announce their presence if they want you to know their name or have a message for you. You, they are around you. They do not have to tell you anything. 
but they can work with you without you knowing anything. So depending on what their task or their mission or whatever you want to call it is, this is how they will approach you. And they may tell you your, their name soon, but I, I cannot guarantee that. One last thing, Lakesh, is yes. I like to make a request to be able to go to the colonies physically. Yes, at night. everyone is now able to do that. However, they are doing last-minute experiments to make sure yes. that it is completely safe. They check, check, and recheck, and recheck. And Nina is a stickler about perfection, and I do yes. mean perfection. He <laughs> yes. is within one one hundredth of perfection in all that she does. Much love. Thank you so much, Lakesh. Much love to you. It has been fun talking to you. I think I must go. Unless I, I need to finish. Uh, I, I think somebody was speaking. Oh, else. yes, somebody else. Okay. Ellie? Yeah, go ahead. I'm pretty sure it was Ellie. Was it Ellie? Yeah, I have a question oh, oh, yes, for yes. myself. I've been asking questions for everyone. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. Yes, um, I had a question about what exactly am I doing in the colonies? What am I being trained on? You are being in uh, number one and number four right now. Number oh, one is telepathic and languages, and number four is channeling. Number four is channeling. Oh, very good. Thank you. <laughs> and um, Justin had a question about his hybridization. Yes. He wanted to confirm, and I believe Andromedan and, um, ooh, where is it? Andromedan and... Something about his Pleiadian, uh, his girlfriend. Yes. And do they have any children together, like hybrid children? Uh, first of all, uh, no, they don't have any children yet, but they have asked for that, and that will come about. Right now, the hybridization program is very busy, and they are doing much uh, uh work in that field, but they do not want to overdo it so that they cannot observe the reactions and the responses that they really would like. So they are not going to overdo that. But yes, they will probably have a child within a year. Um, yes, Andromedan, I can confirm that. And he's Octorian? Is, is that also confirmed? There is some Octorian. It is not as strong as the Andromedan. And, and he Pleiadian on his girlfriend's side is definite, 4%. Yeah, he wanted to know about if she was a Pleiadian fairy. A Pleiadian fairy? No. But she is a, she does have some fairy in her. And and that is very rare. This What it means when you have fairy DNA is that you had to ed do a favor for a fairy, which is unusual, or mate with a fairy, which is also unusual. And that is the only way you can get their DNA, if they offer it to you or you do it physically. But they do not like humans that much because humans destroy the environment, and so they do not really become involved with humans too much. But um, it appears that she has some... Uh, fairy DNA in her, yes. Mm -hmm. And the reason why she's feeling that it's Pleiadian is because she sees a blue tint. So um, that is not unusual for Earth fairies. They can be blue, yes. Not as dark as blue as some, but they can be blue. Does that answer his question? Yes, I believe so. And Tyler wanted to ask about the UFO in Houston, the Texas. Taylor or to Tyler? Tyler, Tyler. Yes. Houston. Yes, oh, yeah. Apparently it was seen by many people. Yes, yes, yes. That was. Um, yes. What do you want to know about that? He just wanted to ask you about the sighting. <laughs> yes, it was a sighting, yes. And it, oh. it was definitely a sighting. And it was a Yuyil ship. Uh, they're trying a different si kind of ship right now. And I, it actually touched onto the electromagnetic field and became visible for a, a bit of time. And they didn't actually really care about that so much because 
uh, they were able to get away before any kind of military action would take place. So it was an intentional mm. show? It was a little bit unintentional. They don't care about it as much, but they weren't intending it to be at that moment. So, yes, I. Uh, I have one question. Yesterday, I believe I healed a person, yes. and I became very hungry. And um, I was wondering if you had any advice about that. Okay. Yes. Let me tell you about how he, different kinds of healing. What kind of healing did you do? Reiki healing? Or um, a, a, a Hathor Tony. A Hathor Tony. Ah, because when some of the energy comes through you and out through you, yes? But you do at some times intend that your own energy comes in strongly. When that happens, it does come in through you strongly and can take out nutrients and things of that nature to give to the person that you are healing, minerals and nutrients and nitrates and even um, some uh, other like non-physical antibodies and things of that nature. But that does make you very hungry at the end of it. Yes. Oh, okay, because I wasn't even aware that I was about to heal him. It just, mm -hmm. I got an inkling that I should do it. Do just yes. atoning. But you put yourself in it a great deal. And um, yes, you gave him a lot and he did have a good healing. That's very good. Thank you. But I would suggest to you, intended to come more from the universe than from yourself. Because that mm -hmm. depletes you. And if it comes from the universe, it doesn't deplete you as much. Oh, okay. So intend it to flow through you and out through you, and it doesn't take as much of yourself with it. Do you understand? Yes, So that I you understand. won't be as hungry, you won't be as depleted. In fact, you should be energetic after your healing. After a healing, you should feel the energy of the universe has replaced much of the old energy in your system. Okay, so whenever I get an inkling about um, that I'm about to do a sound, automatically think of the universal energies. Yes, and intend it to come through and mm. help you to do the healing because you want more of the universe's energy than your own. Right. Okay, yes. thank you so much. And also you can carry a little bit of food with you, so when you get hungry, you just... Yeah, I, I was just like, wow, I'm hungry in the middle of the night. I had to eat twice. Wow, <laughs> that's... You really used a lot of yourself, but you intended that. That was giving of yourself, which was not bad. I am not saying that that is a bad thing. You can deplete yourself and re replenish yourself as well, but if you want not to deplete yourself, if there's more than one healing going on that you would like to take place in, I would call on the energy through the universe and even up through Mother Earth, up through the chakras, if you would like to take Mother Earth's energy that she purifies for you, and not use as much as your own. All right. Thank you so much. Love you. I have a clarification question. Like half an hour ago, you said that you had two implants which didn't go well. Was it Jim speaking about two implants that didn't go well? Remember I mean, implants which uh, I'm mean, talking to Lakesh and Jim. Oh, okay. So Lakesh said that you, Lakesh, you said that I, quote unquote, you said I have two implants which have to be had to be replaced. Yes. Was it in your Lakesh's body or in Jim's body? It was in Jim's body. Oh, so it was Jim speaking. Yes. Oh, Jim, when you say, uh, you have to say, hey, Jim interrupted Lakesh, blah blah blah, because it was very confusing. <laughs> How Lakesh can have implants or something? Lakesh, I didn't you? mean to. Have him interrupt. He just burst in, but he's gone now. Uh, Lakesh, do you have any implants in yourself? No, I do not. All right, we have Robbie. Do you, do you have any burning questions, Robbie? Hi, Lakesh. Yes. Hello. It's Rowie. It's great to see you, my brother. Oh, it's great to see you too, Rowie. Um, the question is relating to what was asked earlier by Sarah about my experience last night. Yes. The Phoenix. Yes, I had this experience of an uh, uh, entity. Um, I was reaching out to quite a few people telepathically. Yes. And I also had a, uh, 
invitation out to anything else of, yes. of, of positive light and an entity came through me and it felt I, I got a name of Phoenix of the Fire Oversoul. The Fire but Oversoul, yes. The experience was one of what I felt of alignment. Yes. And there was a lot of light coming through and very pleasant experience and it was very brief, it wasn't very long but it was um, very interesting to know what was going on or to have any more insights onto... Yes, I do. The phoenix always is there for vibrational uplifting because you know the story of the phoenix, correct? Yes, I've already had so an, uh, Anything that calls itself by phoenix has risen up from ashes, has risen up from low places to become a higher being. And so that's, therefore, they were telling you that you are rising up to be the higher being now. That is the experience that, that they wanted you to have at that moment, to understand that there was more to the rising up than just um, one phase. You're going through at one phase, there'll be more rising up, but you will. Phoenix will come to you again. Fantastic, but thank this you. It was a fire cleansing. And what the fire cleansing did was actually got rid of some of those uh, negative things that were just easy to get rid of and not so meaningful as to bring you down, but they did lighten you. Great, yeah, I do feel much lighter today. And so he found a new crystal. Someone gave it to him. Ah, crystal, yeah, Very good. What kind of crystal is it? It was a quartz wand. Oh my! Is it very powerful? Um, it seems very powerful. It seems to manifest into my life. Very good. In a very special I, way. So let yeah. Me, I will. Let me check it for you. I'll go hold it. Yes, are you holding it now? Yes. Who gave you this? This wasn't given to me. This was found. Um, it may be it belongs to somebody else. It and maybe it needs returning. For, it's been lost for a little while now, and you found it. It belongs to someone of great healing power and intentions. Keep it. If they come back for it, give it back to them. But if they do not, use it as your own. It finds you familiar. Yes, the interesting thing was that I was volunteering myself and my equipment at a festival and when I packed away the equipment that I used in the morning this crystal was left in this dome and it was where my equipment was previously. Yes. So the festival was over and I picked it up because I thought someone might have left it behind or it might have been for me. Um, it was actually not left for you, but you finding it is very interesting because it will help you. That was my, my, that was my thought also. Thank you for confirming. Yes. Rakesh, I We're want to take care coming. There is no time, so I would say, Lakesh, may the days that we meet be blessed. I didn't get that. Blessed, thank you. Yeah, she gave me. Oh, the days thank you. We are blessed. Oh, very good. Well, I will leave you now then, if you would like yes. someone else. So I will take care of my business and I will let you go. Have a wonderful day and greetings to everyone. Sonic saying goodbye to you. Oh, thank you. Sonic. Hello. Um, Lakesh, I need to tell you. We're yeah. going to bring yeah. Takur. Lakesh, uh, I need to tell you that your daughter, your granddaughter's name, uh, Quraysh, means uh, an old city in Mecca. 
Oh. Oh. Yeah. That's interesting. It's an Arabic name. Yeah. How do you pronounce it down here? Uh, Quraish. Q U R. Yeah. Q U R A I. Quraish. Quraish. Yes. Quraish. Yeah. Quraish. Quraish. We, yes, we Quraish. say more Quraish, Quraish, but you say Quraish. Okay, that is fine. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. You Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hey, G. Welcome back. Hi, Jim. Jim. Hey, Mr. Jim. Hi. How are you? Where, where have you been, Jim? <laughs> I'm <missed> <laughs> uh, right here, probably. <laughs> what happened to the tape beyond? Has it been lost? Has what been lost? The tape beyond. The video. Oh, they talked oh. about that. Now. Yeah, yeah, it was censored. The censors took it away. Yeah. And I wanted to speak about it. I wanted to say it to Lakesh, but I think uh, I can say it to you and they will hear anyway. Yeah. We, we, so, should, we should not public everything about this in other the way live. Other yeah. Way, other way around. Other way around. We, okay. should, we should say it publicly. We are sure on everyone. We are helping the sensors as well as uh, the grassroots. We are not, you know, we are not set up for secrets. Our site is so open, our community <laughs> is so open, anyone can come in. So, I mean, there is no way to keep secrets here. We can keep private things, but, but we are not doing any underground political things. Everything, everything political we do open. So, so I have tons of experience with censorship because I come from Soviet Union. 33 years I lived in, I lived there. And uh, you have to know censors. Who are these censors? These are people. I know what I'm saying is a message for the aliens. How to deal with that? I wrote it in my book, but I, here is a little more insight. So, who are the censors now? They are military, obviously, who have a nice career. They established all the clearance, security, and then they found the job of being censors. These could be political people religious people, anybody who can get clearance, but people who prove themselves to be, you know, fearful, trustworthy, and uh, aligned with a certain, you know, structure. So they're very polished and brainwashed to be trusted. Okay? So the same was in Soviet Union. You cannot become a censor just, just like that. You have to be either a relative to someone or to get in the ranks. Okay? Now, if you want a message to go through a censorship, through a, how do you call it, censorship, yes? yes. Um, it can be either one of two types, I believe. I mean, there are varieties, but two types. Go ahead. One type is it has to be really, really funny and entertaining. Like um, our stand-up comedians in, in Soviet Union could say things which nobody else could say. Because even censors, even KGB people love stand-up comedians. They just love them. I mean, they have they are humans, and when it is funny, they, they laugh, and they would allow that to pass through through their censorship. They would cut little pieces of it out, but, you know, they would spread the message. You know, the most funny things was were distributed by our KGB people. They copied them for themselves, and finally they, they let it out, that sort of thing. And second, it has to serve their political agenda. So their political agenda now is agenda of fear and agenda of war. So they would appreciate the messages that play along with their agenda. For example, they would love to expose aliens as being negative. Okay? So that's why they allow a lot of uh, movies about aliens, but there in these movies, the the aliens have to be really, really negative and scary. And, you know, that, that is totally permitted by current political censorship of you no know, global conspiracy. They allow anything about 
aliens being very negative, that aliens are bad. So, I would recommend that our colony number three would make either a really funny, funny stand-up comedian message for the for the humanity, like Robbie does, like ascended master, something of that sort. Uh, and uh, or second thing is, uh, how about uh, you guys up there expose some common enemies? Like there is like possibly bad aliens, which are enemies of both of Pleiadians, Yael and our human politicians. Maybe the Zazetas, I'm not sure actually who they are, maybe Orions, maybe some really, really bad guys. And if you expose those, they would appreciate that and they would let it through. And when you open the door first, then you kind of let other things through the door. So, you know, that that would be my recommendation for the colony number three. Do something, release something now which would just open the door, which would be allowed by sensors to come through. And you can do it either through us or just, um, you know, electronically it's really, really simple. Just hire some, you know, bring up some hacker and he, he can do it for you. You know, you create multiple sites, post it on multiple sites, and the uh, uh, torrent system is basically almost uh, impossible to stop. And there are other systems. So, so when it is on multiple computers, people already take care of spreading the, the viral message. But the message has to be kind of benign enough for our sensors and also play along with them. That's all I wanted to say. That's a good message, a very good message, Max. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I know from you know from from the experience. We, we you know, lots of people in Soviet Union. We we, we grew, grew up with censorship. We really know you know, don't know them in person. We drank vodka with them. We really know who they are. And here here many people really know in person these people who are responsible for censorship. You know, they 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 don't even hide. Some of them are public figures. Oh, no, they don't, don't do groundwork, but don't do hard work, but you know, they define the policies. And next uh, next message is announcement. We have a nice video page now. Uh, it's called Movies. It's on the top right on the site. And thank you, Ravi and Roxy, for contributing your favorite movies. I think movies, videos are very transformational. The videos are allowed to pass through much more than it is possible to pass through text. The way the vibration of the person, the vibration of the actor is much more informative than just the words they, they convey. And so much, more quick, much more quick. Yes, quicker and more it profound. Humans are very, very easy to program. Humans are very easy to learn. Humans are uh, very programmable. So when we watch a movie, we kind of pick in, uh, pick different behaviors. And some people, you can just you know, tell that, that phrase they took from this movie and that behavior they took from this movie. So we are kind of um, a product of movies. We are a product of television. And it's really hard to not to be a product of television and movies. Um, so, and, and I, I, I find you know Picard from Star Trek very infectious. In any case, um, and Data, and Odo. In any case, uh, please um, contribute your favorite movies, transformational ones. The main topics are obviously channeling, spirituality, ascension, aliens. Uh, and actually, for many, uh, I was I was inspired to do that by a young person who wanted to learn things. And uh, I thought that you know, how do I teach many things at once? And for me, it was the easiest way to create sort of a list of the movies I endorse and recommend for young people to watch and to analyze and to learn from. So let's create that page and let's expand it. What, uh, actually there is not that many, there is so much junk out there. It's like 99.9% .9 is, is junk, something which is, I would, re would recommend not to watch. 
but there are a few things which pass through censorship and uh, they are amazing mm -hmm. and look at this page um, there are some Russian movies there which are with English uh, captions and um, they are masterpieces they are very transformational and there are some European some American things which I would highly recommend and uh, I don't know it would be nice if you kind of sort of watch them together maybe we could post one movie as a post and say let's go watch together and maybe discuss a core experience together like contact yeah like contact contact is my favorite because it's about scientists mm -hmm. it's about censorship in science it's very profound and it's like encyclopedia of censorship and science and how do you go through that and it's profound yes mm -hmm. it's it's wonderful hello um, it's a quarter after 12 do we have time for another person oh do we have energy for the other person oh is anybody want anybody else to come through if you have the energy I, I had a feeling it's quite intensive to friends today. What? You're breaking up a lot. You have a lot of energy. <laughs> do, you have, do you have anything want to tell tell us more about the colonies today? Oh, um, I don't know. Somebody comes through. The car is good and the uh, ascended master is good also. Uh -huh. Jim, can you hear me clearly? Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. We hear you. Your first few sounds disappear. So if you want to say something, say mm, and then speak. So your okay. microphone mm. switches to you. I want to ask about um, about the ecology, about the whole animal kingdom, and uh, are they looking after the animals? Because we know that animals cannot protect themselves. Yes. Especially when there is a lot of pollution and the, Fukush the Fukushima and uh, a lot of other things. Are the Brookhitnir helping? Because we know they're helping with the weather and as much as they can. The, the only thing that they told me that I can remember, yeah, they're helping them, but they're helping the plant life as well. They were saying that a lot of pl trees are dying just because they cannot, uh, the vibration in the air the and the chemicals in the ground are starting to reach them. And trees are slow-moving creatures, really. I mean, they grow very slowly. I, I mean, trees grow slowly and they live many, many years. But um, they can't evolve fast enough to maintain to adjust uh, huh? to adjust they cannot adjust they can't adjust right good thought yes they can't adjust to the way the earth is being treated and so they die <clears throat> so and that's the way with the animals and insects as well if they can't adjust they start leaving and passing away so or becoming smaller in number because only a certain amount of them can adjust. But the good thing about the insect and the plants is that they have so much tolerance. They they can take yeah. so much, and the insects evolves very quickly. Insects do yes, but trees do not. The plant life does not evolve real quickly. But you can hybridize plants, of course. But they do not evolve quickly on their own. And I, th I think that the ETs have been mixing with animals and plant life a long time. And that's why evolution of plants and insects have gone very quickly, yeah. more quickly than it should have been. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I think. I, I, should, I should clarify something. Plants do evolve pretty quickly, but not in over hundreds of years, not over just a, six decades. Yeah, but some evolution of animal, animals and stuff have happened quicker than they should like. I, I think we should put the question for everyone that are watching is what do we want to have as a future? Do we want to keep the beauty of the nature? Do we want to preserve the, the old trees because we have 300 years old trees that are struggling at the moment and yes. uh, we think about this 
And uh -huh. as the girl said last time, because I don't know if she will come today, uh, she said that uh, like a whole continent have to be planted with trees in order to help our environment, the pollution at the moment. So wow. we should deeply think about this. What what can we do? What how can we change each and every single one of us? What can we do in order to make a difference? In order to influence someone else that is polluting that is not thinking about this in order to spread the world the word around the people that do not know about the problem at, or are not seeing what's happening and how things are struggling we should think about this yes definitely I agree very good thought you should bookmark that little speech in, in the uh, in the Jim video has, uh, that's Jim where has the again talking about plants and plant life and animals, but what I'm thinking in my mind is the wars are still going on. I'm so surprised that wars are still going on. This is my main problem, actually, more than anything else. If the wars will stop, then everything will be flourishing, plant life and everything else, because everybody will be at ease and at, at harmony. Can they help the ETs in this uh, aspect? Yeah, that was my feeling as well, like the wars in Russia, it looks like or a anywhere, it looks like they are not interfering, they take the politics of non-interference and we discussed it last time, it looks like you know, uh, it was very alarming for me to hear that whoever came first, which aliens came, alien race came first to the country other, other aliens don't interfere with that country anymore, say if Russia is taken by negative reptilians then you know all others just let it alone, and that that is like a nightmare, right? It's a recipe of a nightmare. We have different alien races fighting to each other using humans, which is not the way it should be, right? Right. And uh, give, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm pretty sure they don't even want to mess with with the politics. They don't want to mess with the war because if you support one group of people who are trying to stop then then um, they are interfering and they become responsible for what we do and they don't want to be responsible. But we're asking for it. We're asking for the help for to stop the wars because this is out of out of out of our hands, you know? They have this point that they don't no interference about the, the politics or the wars. They do are they are interfering with the with the with the Climate. They say they're helping the climate, but we need the wars are more vital. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, that's helping nature and stuff is not as intrusive as being involved in a war. Because what's what's going to happen if they uh, start trying to change the dynamics of the alien politics on Earth is there's going to be an alien war on Earth and they don't want that. But um, I think they do work there, do work, they are working in some politics. Yeah, that was the reason last time I invited people who are playing on the ground, aliens who are playing on the ground. And that's why, you know, they brought someone from Congress one of the four aliens in Congress who to speak to us. And apparently they are playing on the ground, but in a, not in a way I expected them to play. They have individual aliens who basically collect information, but they, again, they don't interfere. They collect information, but they don't interfere. So I was thinking how could they, you know, enlightened aliens, how could they really change things down here? You know. There are a few of them, like there are, you know, 20 people working up there in orbit, or maybe 40 people, and a lot of them have proper training and clearance. How this 40 aliens can affect 7 billions who are... I think we have Takur coming through. All right, uh, how can they do that? Uh, basically, they have to take sides, and they have to support uh, good groups of people who, who want to make a positive change and they have to expose negative people but that interferes and then they become responsible and then they become involved and then you know they have to bring troops and stuff like that it's a nightmare right 
So it, developing that policy is very important, and I think they have policies. So it would be nice to learn about that. It looks like a reptilian coming through. These human bodies are just crap. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry for that. Greetings. Yeah. Very good. Greetings. Uh, greetings. Greetings. To the master oh, party. There's a bunch of you. This is a best pod. Yeah, I met you with you before. <laughs> How are you? I am. I'm okay, but you're talking about politics again. And what are you going to learn? That you're you just don't. You guys have no control. No, let's talk about strength. Let's talk about strength. That. Honor. What do you want? Strength. Strength. And I can honor. talk about strength. <laughs> strength and honor. About strength. Come on, give me strength. <laughs> How about honor? Honor is good. Honor is great. It comes with strength. Yeah. They're connected, you know. It's not that they're separate. If you have honor, you have strength. If you have strength, you have honor usually, yeah. What What is it that you respect the most? About what? About humans. That they're not in my species. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have are you a comedian in your, in your species? No, What? Are you a comedian in your species? Oh. But you have a no. nice sense of humor. No, I, I just want to just knock on your head a couple times. That's all. We okay. love you. We love you. You're so blunt and to the point. That is so honorable. Thank you. Yes, we it's need that. honorable. We yes, need yeah. that. yes, we need honorable. We do. We do need honorable. And it comes with strength. Strength and honor together. Yeah. <laughs> May not I am in... Yeah, what? May know who's speaking. I can't hear you. What's your species? May we know who's speaking. Oh, you can know my species. We're rather, we're the risers. The risers. Why yeah. do you call yourself the risers? Because we're we're not as bad as the bad guys, and we're not as good as the good guys. <laughs> <laughs> I am, and bodies may be crap, but I still love them. Yeah, we're okay. But we're like rising out of the muck, sort of, but yet we still like the muck a little bit. So, I mean, they do have their points. You know what I'm saying? That, yes. I mean, some of these, some of these dark guys, they they have their points. They have honor. They have strength. They have uh, they have a plan. They have. Oh wait, wait, wait! I have a question though. Why do you consider them dark? Yes, thank oh, you, sir. No, I'm using your terminology. They're they're purple or whatever. I don't care. But <laughs> vibration, vibration. Um, a darkened, a darkened oh, spirit. Oh yeah, dark, dark. That's your word, you know. Diminished light, diminished light. Whatever. Yeah, low, low, buzzy light vibrations or something. But. Um, yeah, but they have a, a lot of good points, you know? Okay, what are the good points, then? They have honor and strength, and they have a plan. They're intelligent. Um, they're, What's their plan? They're doing for things for their people. They're not just doing it for themselves, but well, I guess it is for themselves since it's yes. their people. But, but, it uh, is from a place of love. Yeah, yeah. Their uh, their ideal of love? God, no. You don't want a place of love. love. No, 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 no. <laughs> They're a place of strength. That's their. Okay. You know, okay, I was gonna ask that. You don't understand them at all. They're they're nothing like you. They don't come from a place of love. No, okay. they don't come from there. I understand that they're coming from a place of strength, but how is it strength to destroy the world instead of helping it to flourish? Oh, God, Jesus. 
Uh, how many questions like that are out there? Oh, raise of hands. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm you're trying so to understand funny. this. I'm trying to understand. Why destroy the planet that you're on? They're not going to destroy it. They're just going to use it. Because they don't have a good planet to use. So they, this one's so, good enough. So how why does not it help it? to destroy the fun. nature and to destroy... They're not going to destroy nature. That would be destroying themselves. No, they'd rather just own it and use it. You know what I mean? Are they, are they attempting to teach us um, their plan, so so to speak, and, and, and raising our strengths well. and... So we don't need their plan. Uh, oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're trying to teach you all right, but you don't learn very fast. So um, <laughs> they teach you that strength is better, and that you should be strong individuals, and not namby pamby. And not give in to everybody else's will. You can live a separate life and still have your own life. You know what I'm saying? Sure, you. there's the officials and the people above you and stuff. But you don't have to take their crap. Yeah, so what is your role within your species? What, what is you my role? Is your I'm, I'm, my, role, my role right now is retirement. <laughs> yeah, it That's sounds awesome, like, dude. Dude. Yeah. like a grouchy old man. In yeah. <laughs> five years, how old would you be? I'm I'm old. <laughs> what that's are you? Three hundred years. That's why they let me through. That I'm a respectable. I did all my stuff back whenever it was, and you know, so they let me through just to voice my opinion. It makes me feel better. <laughs> But it means the last laughter is making me feel amazingly better. The strength I'm feeling in my heart from the laughter is is much appreciated. Much gratitude. Oh, is yeah, pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gratitude and strength, not love. Gratitude and strength. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Gratitude. Yeah, that's. Is that gratitude. better? Cool. Yeah. I was on Earth for a while as a military person. Gratitude's cool. I mean, I can live with that. I <laughs> learned your language. I was in, I was in the military in the United States. That's how I learned this language, this forbidden, primitive language. Um, but yeah, I was in the military. I was a soldier. I was a, a leader. I, of course, I, I rose right up to leadership. Of course. When you, when you were there, that position, what did you enjoy the most? Making people sweat because Making some of these guys needed to sweat to get their bodies into shape. They needed their minds in shape. So I let them sweat and they bring themselves up, you know, get strong. I, I did not even get allowed to apply for military here in Sweden. Oh. <laughs> so, That's how awesome I am. Is this your energy that's compelling me to move to build strength of body along with strength of soul? Yes, you have other things telling you that too. The chemicals in your body, your psychology, your intelligence, all these things point to exercise, right? Yes. How you feel when you have to exercise? Strong. You're so yeah, endorphins are released, serotonin in some cases when you're feeling happy. Yes. You know, it's good for you. It's strong. <laughs> Don't use that steroid stuff. That's a that's that's <laughs> cheating, man. <laughs> I've, never <laughs> done it. I've never done it. Never touched it. All natural. All natural. That's the only way to go. Uh, yes. Do you have do you have a tail? Oh God! If you're gonna ask for that again, yes, yeah. I have a yeah. tail. <laughs> <laughs> Not a very big tail anymore. We can have it removed for speed. If we want to be faster, it can be removed. If you're, if it grows back sometimes, but hey, it's not not hard to take off. <laughs> Is it um, were you a hybrid or a human when you were in the army? I just was in a human body. That's all. 
Uh-huh. I just was they they made me look human. Yeah, I learned a lot. Do you know Trash? One at a time. So you can shape shift? Well, not naturally, but we can do it technology wise. Do uh-huh. you know Trev? Trev, oh yeah. Bambi Pambi. But he's he's okay. <laughs> what were you guys doing in my dream last night? Uh, what? You guys were in my your race was in my dream last night. Did we the kick rising. your ass? <laughs> yeah, not really. Okay. I won. Well, then it wasn't us. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was told it was, but I guess not. Oh, oh yeah, it might have been us. We might have been on good behavior. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> ah, here's a great question. When you say your race is very honorable and what you do, who do you look to, when in a sense, for guidance? You just you do within your own race, or do you look for others, which you call as equals or uh, teachers? Who are your yeah. teachers? Here's a great uh, idea. Um, those people that have risen to great honor are those that I look to. They had strength and character. Yes. Character, something is, you know, they did things for the right reasons and not just to kick ass. Right. So right. they did it for the right reasons, and those are the people that rose to the heights of where I would like to have been. Yeah. Yes. Do you, you have, have a higher power? A higher power? Yes, there's always a higher power. Except, uh,. Sometimes he has to listen to me, and I don't always have to listen to him because we build our own universe, right? Well, if you go for that in the truest sense, then you don't have to listen to him all the time because he's a Mr. Good Guy all the time. <laughs> we can't yeah. do that. The races that you that um, that are teachers, who do other races, what are the races that influence you guys? You think that we're influenced by other races? <laughs> in po- what I'm saying in a positive way. Like, I mean, your teachers, your guides, the others that you... Yeah, we, we read about them, and if there's something that we like, that's good. I don't go asking questions. Right, right. <laughs> and they don't, don't have to be in to tell me anything either, because I would say, get out of my face. <laughs> so you keep uh, listening to questions. Politics. Um, is there any way aliens can influence the politics in a positive way, like stop the wars and make good good guys win? There, there's hundreds of ways to do that, except that with the people that are in power right now, that's the influence you got. You let you let some really strong men get in there, and they're not going to be easily taken away. Yeah. I, I find it's very fun in some ways how the wars going on in here in, on Earth right now. It's just talk right now. Well, pe- people are saying, oh, Putin's working against his people. It's the reptilians. They're, they're working against his people. He's letting them. And there's so much talk about North Korea that they have a nuclear bomb they can send them. No, they, they can send it. They can't send it. Nobody will let it. them use that right now. Nobody will let them use that right now. It, That's, it's just, it's just, just unnecessary at the moment. It's just a war to control people in some ways. Yeah, it's a. It's a. It's wow. not actually a war. Nah. So, so, it's, it's a, a mind mess. control situation. It Do is. you have angels in your in your universe or your Reptilian or your angels? Yeah, well, I guess there's such a thing. Yeah, they talk about them. I never call on them. <laughs> but there are some people that say that there are reptilian angels, and I'm going, yeah, you ever see one? <laughs> hey, hey, uh, hey, can you tell me which? Reptilian DNA I have. Oh, who cares? <laughs> it's not yours. 
No, it's not mine. How about demons? Are you in touch with demons? <laughs> <clears throat> We're not in touch with demons. But we know that they exist. But yes, not that's great. How about that's draconians? Ah, draconians, that's different. Yeah, I, I've, I've been in touch with some draconians. Um, are they, yeah, are these the ones in the Bible? The ones that were referred to in the Bible? Yeah, I think they're referred to in there a couple times. What is your opinion of this? Fallen angels are mentioned in the Bible a lot, yeah. But you they to... mated with earthlings and created gi a race of giants. Remember that? So these were reptilians? Yeah, well, no, they were angels. Angels that decided they didn't want to stay in heaven until so they came down and impregnated a bunch of women and started a race of giants. Hmm. Is that what we know as the Anunnaki or the Elohim? Um, some of them are in the Anunnaki and Elohim, but they're not the general title of it, no, no. Do you have any knowledge of the Nagas that we do not have or know of on the Earth currently? Of course, we have tons of knowledge you don't know. Well, we just something that's, that's important. We have technology that's important, I guess. You are of the Nagas? Oh, he's talking about Nagas. Oh, Nagas? Nagas. What's that? Snakes. Oh, snake. the snake species. Yeah, 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 yeah. What about them? I don't know. They look like cobras a little bit. Yeah. How long? How long have they been? A the human cobra kind of thing. This is who came in during a approach earlier today. Then for me. Uh, I'm sorry, I lost track there. Oh, for a tell me about your life. What is interesting yeah, I, to you? I, I have to get situated here. All right. My energy is not so good right now. All right. Tell me about what? Your life. How are you? What's interesting to you? No, uh, well, I shouldn't be talking to you. But, um, yeah, but you guys sort of interest me. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, where do you live? Is it a planet or a ship? I'm on a ship. And you, you, do you look at us? You like visit our ground places? How yeah, do you look at us? There's something about this planet. I was here as like an Earthling, but there's some really nice parts of it that I like to go back to. So, so uh, don't give me a real hard time about that. I'm just a little mushy. I'm old. What's your entertainment? <coughs> uh, I like. Uh, Shooting things and uh huh. What do you uh, shoot? Uh, animals on other planets, and I like what you call taxidermy. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, but I gotta go now because I'm not feeling healthy here right now. All right. Thank you very much. Um, it so was much. fun to have you, and you helped us a lot to clear up some issues. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Vespa. Much love to you. Uh, thanks a lot. We wish you strength and power. Yes. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, and please come again. We wish you personal strength and personal power and health. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Piss off. <laughs> 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 Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Jim. Jim, Jim oh, how do you how here. do you feel with this energy? How, how do you feel with this energy? Um, he left me a little. Uh, my my mind is spinning a little bit right now. <laughs> he was wonderful. <laughs> he was wonderful. Yes. <laughs> Very blunt to the point. We let, I love it. <laughs> oh, it's nice to interact with him. Yeah. I'm After so Max glad. introduced us and did such a good job for the first time. For so. what happened? I'm well, so he's glad. Second or third time already. Oh, that wasn't his first time. Yeah. But um, 
Was his first time on on a webinar? No, no, second time. He oh. was. To, uh, he spoke like three, four webinars ago. Oh, okay. I don't remember. Uh, we need to give him a name. Let's give him a name so we know. Yeah. About yeah. risers, so we need to give him a a nickname. Uh, he is a, a shapeshifter. Well, no, not really. Uh, he was a shapeshifter. He well, was. Well, he did a technology. Technological one. shapeshifter. Um. A riser, riser, old, old riser, old, old riser. riser. Yeah. <laughs> old riser. I like that. Old riser. Right. Old riser. Very good. He's. We'll call him old riser. <laughs> Did yeah. he say anything oh. worthwhile? <laughs> he was basically <laughs> say that love is nothing. Strength is everything. Blah blah blah. Love love love. La la la. <laughs> Jim, it was uh, one of the funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> I loved it. I'm so glad we got it recorded. Uh, well, he was straightforward. I heard some of what he said. He's perfect <laughs> for our comedy club. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Ass ended mastered. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you <laughs> like to hear more seen about that, Jim. <laughs> Uh, I say you've seen that. <laughs> yeah, I want to see more of the ass ended masters. <laughs> oh, dear. Bless you. What? Oh. So, I said bless you. Oh, thank you. He was, he was a little rough on me, though. But yeah. I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah, he doesn't seem to care for us humans too much. No. Yeah. <laughs> we are so bad, bad bodies, uh, so stupid, uh, but it still comes to us. Well, if he doesn't like us, he he likes. He said he, he was doesn't. curious. He was interested, curious about us. Yes, yeah. what we're doing. Well, um, I I could tell he liked you. Yes, he liked you. He did. He didn't have any dislike or hatred that I could feel. He was just here. He's trying to seem strong, but he's really a marshmallow, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I, I don't think he's as mean and nasty as you might want him to be. You might want you to think he is. Because I didn't feel anything real terrible. Lakesh yeah. told me. So let's. Go ahead. Oh, Lakesh told me that his species, the risers, were in my dream last night. Okay. And I remember seeing one of them. And they were a dark green, like a real dark green color. Mm -hmm. And they have tails, and they have sharp teeth, too. Yes, he said um, he did, yeah. I mean, yeah. the other ones. He has and sharp teeth. The energy that I felt from them was really, if I could put it in one word, it was supportive. They're very supportive. Yeah, and I think he was, too. In his own weird way, he was very supportive. He was very good to my body. I, I don't, I mean, he felt a little weird, but he wasn't hurting me, and he was, didn't seem angry or upset or miserable or anything. So he was just talking to you. It yeah, just, I think riser is a really good term for their species because whatever you're feeling, they help amplify that, it seems like. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah. Feels like that way. Okay, very good. At the well, risk of changing the subject, well, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to, to oh, mention muted. to you both <laughs> while you're together. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, but you're soft. Yeah, oh, am I? Okay. You're a little soft, okay. but you, we can hear you. Sorry, bring I'll um, him. Try and bring, him, the mic bring a bit your closer. mic. Yeah, bring that mic closer. Yes. Uh, yeah. Just following the previous thing, uh, the risers uh, they're called zeptods. Um, and race number three is called zeptods. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Um, the clothing that Jim wears, the I mean the wonderful, colorful outfits. Uh, no, sorry, not Jim Max. Um, yes. And I'm thinking merchandise Max. I, I, they would they would sell. They would be a great way to raise funds. Um, That's right. Uh, our members are 
have no money and they don't buy things. Um, it's not not working. I, we we did we had a store for about a month, and there was mm -hmm. one thing sold uh, out of many. No, it doesn't work. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, changing the topic again, bringing it back. So there were two major questions asked. We have like three minutes to to wrap up. Uh, one main main question was, what we do, do we do with ecology? And my take on it is, education is the key, because lots of people destroy ecology because they feel it's the way to go. You know, I know people who would kill an animal or kill a tree just because they feel better when they do that. They get negative energy from it. And uh, kill it from fear, but they kill it from you know the way the old ways the humanity lives, its expansion and taking over. Okay, so education. I mean, ecological movement is big, and education, especially, I don't know, in liberal colleges, ecology is one of the most popular subjects. So yeah, we just need to do more of that. And the second question: How do we influence? Uh, how do aliens and the human colony uh, can influence politics? And uh, the old riser gave us basically the answer: we have to work with the leaders. You know, the structure, the, the human structure works in a way that you know it's hierarchical, and there are leaders there. And I guess it was my advice to, in my book number three, to the aliens is uh, to trade with the leaders, give them what they want, like medical services. You know, most of the leaders are old and afraid to die. If you give them medical services, they would be easily influences, influenced. A second thing you can give them is information. Some information, the aliens have tons of information, some they can give in exchange for alignment. So, so these sort of things, say, you know, Fidel Castro, or whatever, uh, Brezhnev, they were afraid of dying and afraid of losing power. Uh, they could trade a lot of political favors for uh, for medical services and information. And uh, and meanwhile, basically, it's uh, the the path is to grow the new generation, the new grassroots, uh, new age generation, which indigo children, which would take over at some point. But you have to give them the tools and help them to grow. Help us to grow our own uh, society, and uh, it's it's a slow process. We tried a few things, and uh, uh, we learned a lot on on the on the way. But you know, we are not a political force. I mean, uh, new generation, new people—they're just uh, children now, and uh, it takes time for them to to learn how to live. And it would be a very different politics than an old one. You have to kind of create a new culture of new politics. Oh, it's the already basis. happening. Yeah. It's already happening. The changes are underway. Yeah, the 99 movement. I have been with it. It was it was hijacked right away. It was hijacked. Uh, you know, the meetings of the 99 movement was hijacked by older people who were just fought for power and and uh, for them it was just a way to come back uh, into power. They missed it in the mainstream. They tried to make it through the. 99% movement, which was, you know, it destroyed it basically. So it should be different. I guess internet culture is is a big hope now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Facebook, uh, Hangouts, that's mm -hmm. what we're doing right now. Uh, who is into blessings? Brian, are you into blessings? Arcturian ones or who otherwise? Who wants to say if I have blessing? I, um, I can give a little blessing if you guys want. Oh, thank great. you. Thank yeah, you. I love that. Okay, hold on. To the universe out there, to God, God is all that is. All of us together as one, as a unity. Within diversity, there's unity also. Let it move through, out. Let our energy expand, our consciousness expand, to touch these other realms, to pull them in, bring them in, share our love and light. We are one. We have a voice. Each, even each individual, even though they may feel or it seems that they don't, you do. 
You exist. Period. You are here for a reason. If it wasn't meant to be, you would not be. You are here. In this moment. Much love and light to all. Amen. Namaste. Very Namaste. Nice. Um, Namaste. I have a request. Namaste. Yes? Um, my request just for um, continuing the idea of integration of what we believe to be positive and negative. Mm -hmm. My request is to do a blessing in Naga language, which is a, a sort of reptilian. Okay. Um, it just came to me, so if everyone is okay with that. Of course. Yeah. Yes, sure. Namaste. Namaste. Do you have a translation? The flight of the birds is not greater than those that crawl and those that stand. We are all equal, we all feel, and we are of the same energy as the universe. And even if some prefer night to day or day to night, or morning to evening and evening to morning, we are all equal and the same in our generous giving of life to one another. Let's reach out and not judge, but just accept. As I have accepted you, please accept me. And as you accept me, you are already accepted. Interestingly, I asked for translation and what I heard was, a mouse and a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Beautiful. Thank you very much. I didn't have a translation until he said, do you have a translation? And then it just came. So. That was right. beautiful, Sarah. Good job. <laughs> Thank Good you. Job, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a great bye. day. Bye. 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 Bye.